Now we come to lecture 5. Having seen the earlier cycles, auto, diesel, dual combustion, car not, let us have a look at the Stirling cycle. The Stirling cycle is a thermodynamic cycle that describes the operation of a class of equipment generating or operating machines. The Stirling engine is an external combustion engine. Stirling cycle is a closed cycle that is the working fluid which is usually helium or hydrogen. Helium is very safe to use. The fluid causing the cycle is permanently contained in the apparatus. It is not externally discharged or it, it remains in the, the fluid remains in the apparatus that performs the cycle and does not exchange with the outside. The Stirling cycle is reversible. It can be used by generators to obtain mechanical energy from the application of heat and a cold source. We will have a look there. Or a heat and a heat pump. This cycle is used to obtain thermal heat or cold energy by applying mechanical energy. That will be the reverse of this. So let us look at this. There is a hot cylinder. There is a cool cylinder. This is a piston. This is a piston. Both these pistons are connected to the engine crankshaft. This is the crankshaft. And at the end there is the flywheel. Inside is a regenerator. What is a regenerator? It is nothing but a heat exchanger. The advantage of this engine is that it has a low level of noise and vibration and we will see the applications subsequently. So when this piston moves down, this goes up and you will see, you will, it will become clear when you see the PV diagram. Now, the ideal Stirling cycle, let us have a look at the ideal Stirling cycle. It has four thermodynamic phases which act on the fluid. One to two, isothermal expansion. The expansion compartment is heated from the outside and contained gas has an isothermal expansion and the contained gas has an isothermal expansion. 2 to 3 the transfer of hot gases to constant volume isoporic it's called the gas then passes through the regenerator yielding part of the heat which will remain available for a later phase. Part of the heat is released and the remaining sum of it will be used in the subsequent cycle. 3 to 4 Isothermic compression Fluid in the combustion space is cooled by help of this cooling cylinder. Three. Four to one. Heat transfer at constant volume. The fluid flows back through the re regenerator, recovering the heat from the same regenerator. So this completes the 1, 2, 3, 4 and back to initial stage 1. This is all done by the hot cylinder, cooling cylinder and the regenerator which is a heat exchanger. 
Now, let us look at the PV diagram of a real cycle. On this PV diagram, let's say the cubic centimeters of the engine of the space is or the contraction is this is 1100, 1200, 13, 14, 15, 1600 cc. We have got a 1600 cc contraction. The pressure is shown in bars on the pressure scale 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. These are bars. One bar, as you know, is 0 0.1 MPa. Here you will see that the 1 to 2 starts from here. 1 to 2. 1 to 2 isothermal expansion. Heated from the outside. And then 2 to 3 at constant volume. Means come here. This is constant volume. This is 2 to 3. 3 to 4. It is isothermal compression from 1500 to approximately 1100 cc and the fourth heat transfer at constant volume takes place around slightly above 12 bar and stops at around 14 and a half bar from there then again the first up to the first initial position and the this is the actual diagram in the lab which is from these are the readings taken these are the four angular positions of the crankshaft you know 360 degrees the uh, crankshaft revolves twice so one revolution 360 90 degrees for 90 to 70 now what are the uses of this drilling cycle it is used in toys, heat power in power plants, in businesses, stationary electric generators, and even to some extent vehicles. And the most important, because as I said, because of its low level noise and vibration, there is virtually no vibration. It is used for powering the silent submarines, submarines, deep water, deep ocean submarines. Now, this is the stunning cycle. Now, let us come to the last cycle in our syllabus, the Erickson cycle. The Erickson cycle is also an external combustion engine. It was invented by an American named Erickson in the year 1840 for running a hot air engine ship, hot air in the skies. Before uh, the IC engines uh, were invented, the first was the hot air engine ship. It consists of two isothermal and two constant pressure and this two constant pressure cycles the other phases replaces the two isentropic cycles of the Carnot, Carnot cycle. We know that the Carnot cycle is almost fully efficient. It is the most efficient cycle. Thermodynamically reversible cycle is reversible thermodynamically by the action of a regenerator. Regenerator we saw in the previous yeah, what is the function of the regenerator a heat exchanger. The cycle is used in manufacture of closed thermal expansion weak heat addition uh, is closed uh, cycle used in manufacture of closed type gas turbines. I beg your pardon. It is used in manufacturing 
of closed tight gas turbines. The fluid remains in this case also enclosed in the system. It does not with the, the outside, does not go outside. Now let us see the four stages of the compression of the erection cycle. This is the PV diagram, this is the TS diagram. 1 to 2 isothermal expansion, isothermal expansion or heat addition. Heat addition, temperature 1 to 2, heat is being added. Air is heated at constant pressure, 1 to 2, constant pressure, 1 to 2, pressure is constant, from T1 to T2. The second phase is 2 to 3. 2 to 3 constant pressure of isobaric heat rejection. The air is allowed to expand isothermally that is at constant temperature T2, T3 it expands T2, T3 expands from 2 to 3 from initial volume V2 to V3. We know that a part of the heat supply in first stage is utilized for doing work in isothermal expansion. Three to four isothermal compression compresses, volume compresses from 3 to 4 and isobaric heat absorption. Finally, uh, iso at constant pressure, but your pardon, 3 to 4 isothermal compression, air cooled at, it is air cooled at constant pressure from initial temperature T3 to T4. T3, T1 is equal to T2, <coughs> T3 to T4. This is the 3 to 4 isothermal ex expansion from 3 to 4. And the last phase is 4 to 1, 4 to 1, 4 to 1. Constant pressure, isobaric heat absorption. Finally, the air is compressed isothermally at constant temperature, constant temperature, 4 to 1, this is the temperature, constant temperature, T4 to T1, from the initial volume, V3 to V4. We know that some heat is rejected by the air for doing work on the air. I will repeat, we know that some heat is rejected by the air for doing some work on the air subsequently. Hence, heat supplied during the process 1 to 2, 1 to 2 is equal to the heat rejected during 3 to 4. Because T2 minus T1 is equal to T4 minus T2 minus T1 is equal to 3 T3 minus T T3 minus T4. T2 minus T1, T3 minus T4, T3 minus T4. 
the efficiency is same as that of the Connaught cycle as I mentioned earlier. So now that we've seen both the Stirling and Erickson cycles, let us see what is the difference between the two. Firstly, both the cycles are for external heat engines, that is external combustion engines that utilize regeneration. Both use regeneration. The main difference is that in the nature of the regeneration process, this needs to be noted, the main difference is in the nature of the regeneration process. The regeneration process for a Stirling is at constant volume and for Ericsson is at constant pressure. Well, this finishes the various cycles. In the next lecture, we will move on to the remaining part of Unit 1. Thank you.